we've seen this problem before. Um, earlier we compared the lift coefficients for a general aviation aircraft and a commercial transport aircraft at cruise. Um, so um, uh, we had the data that I'm showing here already. Uh, now we're going to look at the Reynolds number and the Mach number uh, for these two aircraft at their cruise conditions. Um, so we've also been given a little more data. Uh, we've been given the um, dynamic viscosity of the two and uh, you can see here um, the general aviation aircraft is slightly higher um, uh, viscosity 3.5 times 10 to the minus 7 slugs per foot second whereas the commercial airport uh, transport is at 3 uh, so that's a ratio of the of 0.86 between the commercial to the general aviation uh, so close but a little bit less for the commercial transport um, also the speed of sound has been given uh, for the general aviation, it's about 1.1 times 10 to the 3 feet per second, and uh, it's a little bit lower for the commercial transport um, at 9.7 times 10 to the 2. Uh, what's going on here with these two being lower is that um, as you move up in altitude, the temperature drops, and uh, the temperature, uh, the viscosity is directly a function of the temperature. It pretty much only depends on temperature. So. Um, as the temperature drops, uh, the dependence of the viscosity is that it decreases uh, with temperature. So, um, sorry, it increases with temperature or decreases with decreasing temperature. So, lower temperature at high altitudes uh, means uh, lower viscosity. And the same thing happens with the speed of sound. It's directly dependent on the temperature, and uh, lower temperature means lower speed of sound. Okay. A uh, little more now, let's look at the Mach numbers. The Mach number is then the ratio between V infinity, the cruise speed, and A infinity, the speed of sound at the uh, given altitude. So now let's just quickly calculate that, and you'll find for the general aviation aircraft, the Mach number is 0.19. Um, and if you do the same thing for the commercial transport, you'll find that it's 0.85. Um, and you can see what's happening here, right? Uh, uh, general aviation aircraft flying at an altitude where the speed of sound is about 1,000, 1,100, uh, but its velocity is only 200-ish uh, uh, feet per second. So 200 uh, um, divided by about 1,000 uh, gives you about 0.2. And um, uh, whereas the speed of sound uh, at the higher altitudes is a little lower, still about 1,000, um, the main difference is that we're flying at a much faster velocity. We're at 820 feet per second. So you can see that 820 divided by 970, that's going to be 0.85. Uh, the overall ratio between the Mach numbers is 4.5. So in terms of Mach numbers, the commercial transport's four, four to five times a higher Mach number than this general aviation aircraft is. Okay, then we're also asked to look at the Reynolds number. Now for the Reynolds number, uh, we need a length scale. And the length scale that uh, we're told to use is the mean chord. And we're given the mean chord. Um, it's uh, 5 for the general aviation aircraft and 23 feet for the uh, commercial transport, a ratio of about 4.6. Um, so almost 5. Okay, so now uh, let's go a little bit further and calculate the Reynolds number. Um, so Reynolds number is the density, the velocity, the length scale, which we're going to use the mean chord divided by the viscosity. So plugging all those numbers in, oh yeah, the length scale is the mean chord, plugging all those numbers in, 4.7 million for the Reynolds number of the general aviation aircraft, 4.7 times 10 to the 6. And Reynolds number is non-dimensional, just like Mach number, so there are no units here. Um, and we do the same thing for the commercial transport, and you'll find that it's 4.6 times 10 to the 7th, so 46 million, for uh, a factor of about 10. Uh, in terms of the Reynolds number being about 10 times greater for the commercial transport. So the other thing you're getting to see here is how large these Reynolds numbers are. So even for the general aviation aircraft, you're talking about 4 or 5 million for the uh, Reynolds number. For the commercial transport, you're talking about 40 to 50 million. Um, and these numbers can get even a little bit larger still. So um, that's everything we have for this problem.